Let's begin this morning's service with a poem from Emily Dickinson. Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. And sweetest in the gale is heard and sore must be the storm that could abash the little bird that kept so many warm. I've heard it in the chillest land and on the strangest sea, yet never in extremity, it asked a crumb of me. At times, hope seems unknowable. Those times when loss cuts deep and faith is challenged and life's just no longer sweet. These are the times, the moments and patches of time in life, if you will, that amidst the dark, hope resides. For no matter how deeply one is in the dark, a single candle can light the way. Now, those candles will be different for everyone, for each and every one of us. I personally call my candle a sparks list, which likely sprouted from the love of Sound of Music when I was a child. I would run around and sing, these are a few of my favorite things. That list of my favorite things and the things that offer joy in my life, the people, places, and things <laughs> that make me smile. The first snow in a new home, a blanket all clean and fresh out of the dryer just before you climb into bed for the night. Friends, family, and family, the mosaic in particular for me. In taking a closer look at the Emily Dickinson poem that I shared at the beginning of this service, I noticed in particular the phrase, yet never in extremity, it asks a crumb of me. Hope touches our lives and yet asks for nothing in return. I will touch on this line a little bit later this morning. In the meantime, hope fills the mind with possibilities. It fills the heart with warmth and it can fill the soul with meaning. The part of all of this that most deeply touches my heart is the fact that nothing is asked of in return. The essence of purity exists in such an act. To give free, freely without any expectation of a return of some sort. Psychologist Charles Snyder writes, a rainbow is a prism that sends shards of multicolored light in various directions. It lifts our spirits and makes us think of what is possible. Hope is the same, a personal rainbow of the mind. This quote made me smile because rainbows are right at the near the top of my sparks list. Not quite his point, but it made me smile nevertheless. He also wrote, higher levels of hope are consistently linked to better outcomes regarding mental health, physical health, academics, athletics, and psychotherapy. Hope is that candle in the darkness, that spark in life that causes an avalanche of possibility. Holding on to hope is so, so very important. Or as Langston Hughes wrote, holding on to hope, hold, it, hold fast dreams, for if dreams die, life is broken, a broken winged bird that cannot fly. My sister says, hope has to come from something, from somewhere. It exists within the very being of each and every one of us here this morning. When I go through my sparks list, I am digging deep within myself to recall those people, events, things, those people, everything in my life that brings me joy. This act gives me hope. The thing is that one can look at the first blanket of snow covering your home as a precursor to a terrifying amount of snow that will arrive in March. Or as nature's repeated cycle of birth, death, and regrowth. As the miracle that sits before each of us each winter. Admittedly, I have yet to experience that March that, that is said to chill one to the bone. However, why not turn up the thermostat and settle into the opportunity to witness a miracle. The editors of the Poetry Foundation ask, how can we find hope amidst uncertainty, conflict, or loss? When we feel we have lost hope, we may find inspiration in the words and deeds of others. 
It is deeper than simple optimism and more mysterious, delicate, and elusive. It is a feeling we must develop and cultivate, but like faith, it is also a state with which we are graced. Hope can foster determination and grit. The ability to bounce back and to remain determined despite failures and setbacks. When we make daily efforts to change and improve what we can control. Extremely difficult situations arise in life, but I truly believe that we can always find hope amongst the darkness. Just as Dis Dickinson wrote, and sore must be the storm that could abash the little bird. However, she goes on to write, I've heard it in the chillest land and the strangest sea. Much like love or faith, hope itself is rather shapeless. Therefore, it is difficult to describe, but we know for sure that hope is a deep belief that change will come. And it seems to me that Miss Dickinson describes it quite well in her poetic masterpiece. It is interesting to note that history records this very thing throughout religious and spiritual belief systems. Hope as a spiritual practice, if you will. In Christianity, hope is integral, theologically speaking, nestled among the three cornerstones in Corinthians, which states right now three things remain, faith, hope, and love. Hope is mentioned throughout the Bible, including passages in Romans. In Buddhism, hope is liberation from suffering. As the Eightfold Path offers a path for understanding suffering and seeking that path for liberation. Essentially, hope is following the Eightfold Path when seeking enlightenment. In Native American culture, hope is best described by Native Max magazine as not only indigenous people, but everyone comes together in a unified understanding of what struggles are and works towards them, works to make them better in a collaborative effort. The word hope itself is si asin. The Hindu belief system offers hope through good karma in this life, which could lead to a more promising rebirth in the next life. The ultimate hope is sought for for a kind of liberation, spiritually speaking, called maksu. Islam's belief system ties hope in with Allah. Although excessive hope and excessive fear are not in practice, when life becomes difficult, the belief in Allah is known to demonstrate faith. The Judeo belief system acknowledges multiple types of hope. The Torah states that in the Masonic age, God will return your captivity and be merciful and gather his people from where they have been scattered, going on to state that God will bring you to the land that your fathers inherited. There's also the hope that life will get better, even if no one knows that it will get better for sure. This is known as Tik Ava, and the hope that is essentially desire for a better life is called Tauzos. And in Sikhism, God, or specifically Vaheguru, hope is placed in the grace of grace of God, or rather in gaining spiritual growth or a union with the divine. Maintaining hope when life is difficult is called Chardikala. For many, finding hope within spiritual or religious beliefs is perceived as finding hope in fantasy. Hope is found with the love of one love of and connection to family and friends amongst other things in life one of the best parts of being a unitarian universalism is the manner in which we honor one another's paths and no matter how an individual seeks and finds hope the important part is the realization that it does exist all around us each and every day within each and every one of us right now this minute it offers comfort and motivation and even potential source of creativity. I have lost track of the number of times that I felt a deep hope and suddenly thought of ideas, ways out of difficult situation or a sort of muse for inspiration when it comes to writing. In and of itself, it is an amazing spiritual tool that can pull us out of chasms, depth and darkness 
where suddenly the light at the ending of the tunnel is no longer an oncoming train. Although all of this is true, there's one thing in particular, a line in that Dickinson poem at the beginning of the service, from the beginning of the service. Yet never in extremity, it asks a crumb of me. Though hope indeed asks for nothing from each of us, we do need to locate it, if you will. For if it is not noticed once in a while, it cannot fill your life with possibility. This is such an easy thing for me to say, or well, rather write, because I'm partially reading something, when many times in life, it's not so easy to find. I have found in my life that there are some things that allow one allow me specifically to find it more often than not. One of those things is patience. Allowing things to unfold in their own time, or as Thomas Merton wrote, you do not need to know precisely what is happening or exactly where it is going. What you need is to recognize the possibilities and challenges offered by the present moment and to embrace them with courage, faith, and hope. Determination and a bit of courage helps as well. Artist Adeko says that, in, uh, that a common and very telling expression is hope for the best, but expect the worst. The more likely outcome it implies is the worst. When we are without hope, we easily fall victim to such negatives, negativism negativism. When the light of hope is absent, we are overcome by gloom and doom, despair and defeatism. One must seek it out. And for me personally, that often means rerouting those negative thoughts, pivoting, if you will, mid negative thought. That behavior modification helps me in the most difficult times in life. I also remind myself of a song I heard here on a Sunday morning when Reverend Matthew Parjeter Villarreal spoke with us here at Mosaic. Julian of Norwich's all shall be well and all shall be well and all manner of things shall be well. The fact of the matter is that hope in and of itself provides the human psyche with a weapon against stress, helplessness, negativity, but one must pick up the sword to battle against those dark thoughts, those negative thoughts. And I believe that Marion Zimmer Bradley said it best when she wrote that the road is built in hope. The road that is built in hope is more pleasant to the traveler than the road that is built in despair, even though they both may lead to the same destination. I cannot speak for anyone else here this morning with us, but I prefer a pleasant road through life if at all possible. I would like to end this morning's sermon with a poem seeped in hope. Purple hued sky amidst darkless leafless trees. One would think hope did not stop to wait for me. Yet I see so many possibilities brought about by choices for change and revel in the mysteries of a future I cannot name. For I am blessed with such uncertainty, with my life currently unfolding before me. Thank you for joining us this lovely Sunday morning. Amen and blessed be.